Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Tuesday the 16th of November 2021. Today in Mill News we have this. This is the FA Youth Cup third round draw. It's the first draw that uh, the Championship and Premier League clubs come in, which is where Mill will are. So it's Mill's first game in the, in the FA Youth Cup. And who did they get? Well, this competition is an under 18s competition, so remind of that. So let's have a little look at the draw and see who we got. So the draw for the this is from uh, the FA.com. Uh, the draw for the third round proper of the FA Youth Cup was made on Tuesday morning, with clubs from the Premier League and EFL Championship joining the competition at this stage. With 32 ties on the competition now staged on a national basis. There are still a number of second round ties to be played over the coming weeks before the third round draw will be finalised. Any clubs will have until Saturday the 11th of December 2021 to play their ties. For the 21-22 competition, players must have been born between this date and this date, which is 15 years old and 18 years old. So where is Millwall? There we are. Number 23, away to Sheffield United. So we got uh, another championship team. Didn't get an easy draw. Didn't get an easy draw. Didn't get a top Premier League draw. Um, so, and it, we got on a, a, a long away trip. Um, not the best of things, but so Sheffield United, we know about them, but what about their under 18s? How are they doing? So, let's have a look at this. Here we go. This is the uh, this is from uk.soccerway.com. And what I pulled up here is the under 18s professional development league. And we'll see how. So, there's Millwall. They they won four three against QPR, um, their last game, which is decent. And here we go. So, Millwall are fourth in their regional division. Played eight games, won three, drawn two, lost three, scored twelve goals, only conceded thirteen. So not very prolific compared to the teams around them. Um, but defence is pretty solid. Not as good as Charlton's. Charlton, Charlton doing really well there. Uh, one six, drawn one, uh, lost one. Pretty good for Charlton, but uh, Mill there fourth on eleven points. So where is Sheffield United? Well, Sheffield United are also in this league, in the northern section, and they are six in their regional division. They've only played seven. They have won two, drawn five, and they haven't lost. They've only scored 15 goals. They've only conceded seven, so that's averaging one a game. So they do love a draw. They do love a draw, and they haven't been defeated. So seems it could be a bit of a tough game for the under 18s as they travel up to Sheffield United. So um, here you go. This is the rules of the competition, and. Um, so it should be being held at Bramall Lane. It's a midweek game um, under the floodlights. Should be seven o'clock kickoff unless they get permission to change it. So it will be a seven o'clock kickoff at Bramall Lane midweek between now and uh, December the eleventh. Uh, uh, when a match is drawn, so. When the match, if the match is drawn after 90 minutes, because Sheffield United love a draw, it will go into extra time if it's draw, uh, extra 30 minutes of two 15 minute halves. And if it's drawn after that extra time, the winner will be determined by the taking of kicks from the penalty mark in accordance with the procedure adopted by the International Football Association Board. So there's the rules, there's our opponent, and uh, Bit of a tough trip, so I hope everyone that's uh, well prepared for that one because this is probably the premier competition. This is probably, to be honest, even better than the league at the, uh, this this kind of age group. That FA Youth Cup is really is top level stuff, um, com which is kind of weird because it's the complete reverse of the the um 
championship and Premier League versus for the adults versus uh, the FA Cup. The FA Cup for for um, Premier League teams is nothing, but for the junior teams, the FA Youth Cup is a big deal. It really is a big deal um, compared to to their leagues. I mean. So we will see. Hopefully we'll um, come through that one and get a bit of an easier draw that we can all go to. Hopefully an home game. That will be a, that's supposed to be held at the Den. We get a home game. So maybe it might even be a top, top uh, Premier League team. Um, I don't know. But it would be nice to have a run in that, at that uh, competition. But uh, we shall see. So let's move on now to this. Um, this is an update from newsatden.co.uk so they say Mill Winfielder returns to full training while defensive linchpin also available after illness George Evans has returned to full training ahead of Mill's trip to Miller's on Saturday with Sean Hutchinson also recovered from the diarrhea illness that forced him to miss the last game against Derby County um, that's good that's good he's shitting normally now Evans hasn't played since he went off with a calf injury in a 2-1 win over Stoke City at the Den on October 23. He is also wearing protective strapping for a broken bone in his hand. Meanwhile, Murray Wallace has been doing strengthening exercises on his knee after damaging a ligament against the Rams. And there he is there. And there's Sean Hutchinson uh, back at training. And that, move, that brings us on to the next story. Uh, this is from millwc.co.uk they they've been uh, they put up uh, some photo shoots from training and uh here we go so there's ryan leonard ojo billy mitchell alex pierce and uh adam barrett in the background here's billy mitchell there's uh, Alan Barrett. Um, what's happening here? What's, what's he wearing there? They're, they're not shorts. They're, did he take a pair of tracksuit bombs and just cut them up? That's um, very weird, especially the way he's standing there with his uh, hand on his hip. Hmm, interesting. Uh, there's Malone. There's Bud Farson, the one with the back to him. That looks like Ryan Leonard, maybe. And then Ojo there. Um, there's Jed Wallace, Bud Farson, George Evans, Alex Pierce, uh, Bradshaw and George Long, uh, George Evans, Hutchison, Mason Bennett, uh, Alex Pierce, and too blurry to see. Uh, Bud Varson, Matt Smith. Looks like Ryan Leonard again, he's getting in all of them. Huh? There's George Long. That looks like Danny McNamara there. Uh, Mason Bennett. George Long. Alex Pierce, Ojo. Billy Mitchell. Jed Wallace. Danny McNamara. Uh, Mason Bennett. Uh, is that Ben Thompson? And George Evans. Uh, Malone and Mason Bennett. All having fun there. Um, there's Rowett. So f he's wearing the same kind of, kind of not quite shorts. What do they call them? They've got some weird name though. Do they sell them in a club shop? Or I've never, I haven't seen them. It's, uh, it's winter's coming up. Well, you, if you're gonna wear shorts, wear shorts. Don't wear. They're not like three, three quarter lengths, but they're not. They're up to the knee. What are they? That's so weird. Oh, he's got a whistle in his in there, blowing his whistle, doing his referee impression. There's Mason Bennett indoors in the warm, doing stuff for his knee. And there's all the, look at all the stuff they got there. That's pretty decent. Uh, back outside. <coughs> Blimey, there's a lot of photos, no? Um. Yeah. Oh, well, that was it. So there you go. Um, pictures from training. Murray Wallace, Billy No Mates indoors, keeping warm. And there you go. So they just wanted to to remind you, Arish, they are doing some training. So there you go. 
we're going to finish with this story about Ryan Leonard. So he gave an interview to looks like the South London Press. Um, maybe this this is going to be in Friday's paper. They did a little bit of a preview here. I don't know. It might be that. Um, so this is from London News Online. Uk. Ryan Leonard on why training has an element of surprise and bouncing back from a slow start. Ryan Leonard admits the Mills training sessions can have an element of surprise and that's all down to his adaptability. When the 29 year old joined the Lions for a Den Club record transfer fee in August 2018, he was brought in to bolster Neil Harris's midfield but Leonard was used in four different roles during a 1-1 draw with Derby County before the international break. The four, <coughs> pardon me. The former Southend United and Sheffield United player has impressed and seamlessly adapted <coughs> pardon me, uh, when tasked with playing deeper. Everyone has their favourite position, but I feel I can bring a lot because I'm very comfortable in 4 or 5, he told the South London Press. You don't see that in a lot of players nowadays. A lot are tied down to one, and that can limit your game time and how a manager sees you and his plans. So I only see it as a plus. It's enjoyable and quite funny going through training as I'm sometimes not quite sure what position I'll be playing in. Depending on who is in the team and what bodies you have available, I can be playing at centre half or right winger. On Saturday, I played four positions in 65 minutes. I started at right back, went to right wing back, ended up right of a back three, and in the last 20 minutes, I went into centre and midfield. It was a bit of a whirlwind, but I really enjoyed it. It's nice to learn positions and how to receive the ball in different areas. Any young player coming through, it's important to be able to play more than one position. It can really help. Lennon has more than paid back his transfer fee. Although undisclosed, it was in excess of the one million fee to price Tom Bradshaw out of Barnsley. Uh, he had his critics and doubters in the early part of his career in SC16. Now he's been talked about as an early front runner for Mills Player of the Season award. Is he though? Um, I don't think so. No offence, he's, he's he's playing well, but um, I don't think anyone's saying that. Uh, recalling when he arrived shortly after George Savile had been sold to Middlesbrough for 7.5 million. Leonard said it doesn't matter what club you're going into, Premier League Championship, League 1 or League 2, if it is for a record fee, then you're always fighting an uphill battle to impress people and do well. Yes, he, he, he has got that stigma on him. Uh, don't get me wrong, in my first season, I didn't perform to anywhere near what, what I was capable of. That was frustrating for me. Since then, I've managed to get my foot in the door, work hard and keep plugging away. It's a club where you're appreciated when you put in hard work and give everything you got. That's what I've done. I played six or seven positions out of 11 for the club. You give everything and you get a bag uh, recognition from the supporters. It's nice to be appreciated. In the last three years, we've had really strong seasons and strong finishes to the season. I feel that I'm in a good place with my game, my career in Millwall. I want it to continue as long as possible and I signed a new contract, which was pleasing to get that sorted. Uh, that deal extension was a show of faith by the Lions in Leonard. He'd been out of action since early February after rupturing three ankle ligaments in a 4-1 win over Sheffield Wednesday. At the time, I was supposed to be out for 8-10 to 10 weeks. It ended up being just over 6 months, said Leonard, who has played 104 matches for Millwall. It was a real blow. I did it after about 25 minutes and then played on until the hour. It was quite sore, but we managed to strap it up. I tried to keep going with it, but it just got to the stage where it was just too sore to continue. I tried to start running again in six to eight weeks, but I knew it wasn't great. Most footballers know their pain threshold and their body. I knew straight away something wasn't right, that it wasn't healing the way it should be healed. I went to see the specialist the second or third time and he told me that after what were eight, I had surgery on my ankle about two days before the last game of the season. It was a real sucker punch. I had a pretty good season up until then. I played 95% of the games and done well. We got it sorted and I worked hard over the summer. It wasn't fun watching people go off on holiday and I was in the gym trying to get myself fit. But it's a game. Uh, you're going to get injuries, either niggles or long-term ones. It's great to have that behind me and to get back to it. Having been injured, it was nice. The club wanted to give me a new deal. It was a no-brainer. I wanted to stay at the football club. The gaffer is building a squad and a team and we're working hard to try and go places. I'm settled, I'm happy and my family's happy. That was the big thing for me. After the international break, Mill will resume championship action in Millsborough, who have just appointed Chris Wilder as Neil Warnock's succession, uh, successor. Wilder was in charge of Blades when they secured Leonard on a three and a half year deal for contract from the Shrimpers, but he stayed at Bramwell Lane lasted just seven months and totaled 17 matches before he joined Millwall. 
When I moved to Sheffield United, it was a big step up, said Leonard. One, in terms of the stature of the football club. And two, I went up uh, a league as well. I didn't get as much game time as I wanted, and that is never great. No one is happy sitting on the bench, but the team were doing well, and I couldn't have too many complaints. There was never any problem with the manager. He understood where I was coming from. Millwall were a great option for me. It was going to be my first full season as a starter in the championship, and I couldn't turn that down. We had the same situation when we played Forest, in that it was their first game after appointing Steve Cooper. I wouldn't say the players try harder, but they have a point to prove. Chris knew what he wanted at Sheffield United and the way we wanted to play. Uh, he played a very attacking football in a 3 5 2. It'll be interesting to see if he does the same there. I can only see him being a success. He did an incredible job at Sheffield United. But we're going to go there and try and almost spoil the party and try and get a result. We're doing well and can go there and play with real confidence. So there you go, Ryan Land in the interview with South London Press. Um, I don't think he's a contender for player of the season, if I'm honest with you. Um, I think that's going to be Jed Wallace at the moment. Um, Bart's had, had a bit, but he's, I think he's way behind Hutchison. With Shane for Hutchison, he's been missing games, so... But when, when, we, when he's not there, you can see... You, you, um, he he is missed. He is very well, much missed. So that kind of helps him out as well, I suppose, for a player of the season. Don't forget Danny Ballard. Danny, Danny Ballard has been pretty impressive, but uh, probably hard to see. Oh, he, he'll probably get a young player of the year award. Um, I don't think most Mill fans will vote for a lone player to get the player of the season award. I don't think they will if push comes to shove. I think it's probably Jed Wallace's turn. I think it's probably going to be uh, way too late in, in the day, but uh, his contracts may, will be running down. And if we're not going to be contending for the Premier League, he's going to try and listen to some Premier League offers to sort himself out financially for the rest of his life. And I can see the fans giving it to Jed Wallace as a thank you and goodbye. Um... I think he that's in terms of player of the season award in terms of the money it is it was a lot of money for us at the time and even it, it's quite a shock that so we he's he was at that time he's basically a league one player as he moved to the championship for from league one to Sheffield United he barely played for them seven months and then we're paying a million pound for he didn't prove himself in the championship He's doing it now with, uh, with us. But he was basically a League One player and we paid a million for him. Which is a lot of money, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, but that's, that's not really his fault. Um, you can, um, but that, that, is a, that price tag is hanging around his neck. Um, and when, when you have other players playing as good or better than him, who we didn't pay that much for, you you're gonna you're gonna flip to the one that didn't didn't cost you uh, your record transfer fee at the time. So, but there you go. Good interview with Ryan Leonard. Um, good to see. So, we're gonna end it there. Thank you for watching and goodbye.